Hello, this is lecture one of an introduction to econometrics class. And in this first lecture, I just want to give you an idea, an intuitive feel for what econometrics and doing regressions is all about. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is not exactly what we do in econometrics, but unless you have the basic idea, getting into all the technical details doesn't make a lot of sense. So the basic idea is in econometrics we want to look for relationships between things. We want to be able to predict things and we want to be able to test hypotheses about relationships. And so what we usually start with is the idea of looking at a scatter plot. Here we have a scatter plot with two variables, horsepower of a car and the price of a car in thousands on the y-axis. And so for any certain point, say this one, the coordinates of this point are 172 horsepower and 37.7 thousand dollars for this particular car. And over here are cars with lower horsepower, 63 and 7.4 thousand dollars. Now this data is from 1993, so some of the cars might be a little less expensive or different prices than you might see now. In a basic statistics class, you learn about the idea of correlation. Are two variables correlated, meaning uh, as one variable goes up, does the other usually go up or down? And the way to picture this is, what is the equation of a line what would the line look like that best models this data? And uh, to me, it would go through these points something like this. And so the first idea is the question, is there a relationship? But regression and econometrics goes much deeper. Not just is there a positive or negative correlation, but what is the relationship exactly? So we want to find the line that best describes the relationship between these data or uh, best models this relationship. And the computer will find lines for us in the future, but I want to start off by just drawing a line that looks good to me. So I am going to add a uh, line here. I'm going to draw it by hand, sort of uh, using Excel, and I'm just going to draw something that looks kind of good to me. Okay. Uh, stretch the line out here, and I think that's a little too high, so if I drag it this way, maybe it'll go through more or less the middle of most of these points. Okay, that's, that's looking pretty good there. I'm, I'm kind of happy with that line. And um, you can do a decent job of explaining uh, the price of cars using horsepower alone here if we wanted to. Now, but what we want to know is exactly what is the equation of that line. So basically, as you know, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, the basic relationship. Uh, where m is the slope, x is what's on the x-axis, horsepower, and y is price in thousands, and b is the y-intercept. Now in econometrics we write this differently. We write it this way usually, y equals b0 plus b1 times x. And usually the 0 and 1 will be subscripts, but uh, I'm limited in Excel as to what I can do here, where y is the price in thousands, x is the horsepower, and b0 is the y-intercept, and b1 is the slope. Slightly different way of notation that we use here. So our question when we run a regression is, well, what is the y-intercept, and what is the slope, and more importantly, what do they mean? And so y-intercept is where this line hits the y-axis down here and I would guess that that looks like it's about minus 4 or minus 5 somewhere around there so I'm gonna say that my estimate b0 is equal to 4 and for the slope we need to find two points somewhere along this line and ask ourselves what is the rise and what is the run between those points and any two places on the line 
will work. Uh, I usually pick the ends of the line, although it's, it's not totally necessary. Uh, I'm going to pick this point right here because it intersects uh, this little crosshatch, and I know exactly what those values are. So uh, this point right here, just to make sure we, we all see exactly what I'm talking about, let me draw a little picture on top of the line there so we can see what's going on. I'm going to uh, put a little balloon over that area. Okay, so this is this is one point on the line that I want to look at. And the other one is just going to be the other end of the line way down here where um, basically the y-intercept at x equals 0 and y equals minus 4. And this other big point over here is uh, x equals 250 and y equals 40. And so we can find the slope uh, equals the rise over the run between those two points. And between here and here, we go up 4, because that's negative 4, and then up another 40. So the rise is 44. And so the rise equals 44, and the run is 250. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 equals 250 and the slope is just going to be rise over run equals 44 over 250 and let's see what uh, Excel tells me that number is 0.176 so that's my slope so we would write this equation something like y equals negative 4 plus 0.176 times x or you could fill in what are y and x well price in thousands is equal to minus 4 plus uh, 0.176 times x. Now, what can we do with this? Three things that we usually do with these things. Uh, the first thing is, from a statistical standpoint, we could test a hypothesis, do a t-test or something else in statistical. Uh, we could test the hypothesis that there is no relationship between horsepower and price. And we can either reject or not reject that hypothesis. Second thing we, do, we can do is just interpret the y-intercept and the slope. Now the y-intercept, this is a bit tortured, but the y-intercept tells us the value of price when horsepower equals zero. What would we predict? Well, if a car has no horsepower, then the price should be minus four thousand dollars because those are our units. Now we don't literally interpret that most of the time because it doesn't make sense to have a car with zero horsepower. Similarly, people don't have zero education or they're not zero years old. Uh, most people aren't. So uh, interpreting the x equals zero most of the time doesn't make sense. Sometimes it does. Now the slope we also want to interpret, which is for each additional x, for each one additional horsepower, how much do we go up? And so for each additional horsepower, the price goes up over one, up how much? Over one, up how much? Well, up 0.176, thousand dollars. You gotta keep the units in mind. And so we can interpret this slope 0.176 for each additional horsepower. We would expect the price of a car on average to go up by about $176 because that's 0.176, thousand dollars. Now lastly, uh, what we do with these equations a lot is predict things. Like, for example, if we put in 100 horsepower, how much should a car cost? And we can look at that two ways. First, look at your line that you drew. Well, 100 horsepower predicts, uh, it looks on the ballpark, uh, maybe 13, on the order of $13,000 there, right? Or we can plug in 100 for X, and we'll get... 0.176 times x is uh, times 100 is going to be 17.6. Subtract 4, 13.6. So our prediction, if x equals 100, then y is going to equal 14, sorry, 13.6 thousand dollars. And we would use that to try to figure out if is this price of this car for 100 horsepower, is that kind of reasonable or is it uh, too much? And the 10 minutes are over, so I'm going to end this video right now.